Well, hey there, kiddos. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you today, but here is your video for what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do a new concept. It's called completing the square. Um, you need to be very patient with yourself and understand this is brand new. It's going to take a little while to get it, but you need to copy down all of the examples step by step and do the best that you can. And then when you come to class tomorrow, be prepared to participate in a discussion and ask questions so that we can make sure that we all understand. So here's what we have. The first thing that you have on your notes is a place for some definitions and some steps. So here's your definition. To complete the square is the process of adding a term to the quadratic expression x squared plus bx to form a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to give you just a second to copy that down and then we'll move on. Okay, so now let's just talk about the steps. I'm going to put them up here and I'm going to give you a couple minutes to copy them down or about a minute or so. And then we're going to do a problem and I'll go back and forth between the steps and the problem so you can see them. But if you don't get them all copied down, you can either um, go get them from a friend who was able to get them all copied down. I will post this video on the website so that you can go watch it again. I will also post this presentation on the website so you can just go copy them down. So you'll have some choices but you've got about a minute. Get these copied down in your notes. Okay, so let's do some examples. I promise I'll come back to this screen if you didn't get everything copied down. So here is the first example that's on your notes page. We have this number one is x squared equals 12x minus 20. The very first step here says to collect the variable terms on one side and the constants on the other. So I want everything that has a variable on one side of the equal sign and everything that doesn't have a variable or the constants on the other side. So I want to get this 12x over here. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 12x from both sides. It's just like solving an equation. So what that gives me is x squared minus 12x equals negative 20 because of that minus sign that was there. So now the next step, step two here says as needed, which means you won't always do this. We need to divide both sides by the a value to make the coefficient of the x squared term one. What that means is if my x squared has a number other than one in front, then I will have to divide everything by that number so that I can make x squared only have a one. I don't have to do step two for this problem because this x squared has no coefficient in front. So I can skip that step. So we're on to step three. Step three says to complete the square. This is the part where we're gonna complete the square by adding b over two squared to both sides. Well, let's talk about what b and b over two are. So if I have this problem and I have put all the variables on one side and the constants on the other, the coefficient in front of x squared is a and the coefficient in front of x is b. So in this case, for this problem, my b equals negative 12 because of that minus sign. I have to find out what b over two squared is. So I'm going to plug in what I know about b, which is negative 12, and divide it by 2 and then square it. Well, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6, and when I square negative 6, I get 36. This is the number I'm going to plug into here to complete my square, because what I'm doing is turning this left-hand side into a perfect square trinomial. Number one, because perfect square trinomials are super duper easy to factor. So I'm gonna take this x squared minus 12x and I'm gonna add this 36 to it that I've just created so I can complete my perfect square. But if I do something over here, I have to do the same thing to the other side of the equal sign. So I have to add it to both sides. So I'm gonna simplify. 
This is now x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals 16. I just did negative 20 plus 36. Now my next step after completing the square is to factor it as a perfect square. To factor a perfect square, number one, it tells me that my both factors will be the same, so I really only need one of them. And so that's really simple. We're going to take this left-hand side and to factor it as a perfect square, and I know it's a perfect square because that's what we did. This adding the 36 and completing the square made it a perfect square. To factor a perfect square, first of all, look at your trinomial and look at the first operation symbol. The first operation symbol is a minus, so my factor has to be a minus. If it's not a minus, this doesn't work. Now to get the numbers that go here, I'm going to take the square root of the first term, so the square root of x squared is x, and I'm going to take the square root of the last term, the square root of 36 is 6, so it becomes x minus 6 squared because it was a perfect square. So I had to, it has to be squared, and that is going to equal 16. Then my next thing says is for us to take the square root of both sides. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the square root of this side and the square root of this side. Well, when I take the square root of something that is squared, it just undoes the squared. So this side becomes x minus 6. When I take the square root of 16, and we're going to go back to what we talked about a couple weeks ago when we first were solving with square roots. The square root of 16 is 4, but remember it is positive or negative 4. It can be both of them, so I have to include both. So it is either positive 4 or it is negative 4. So my last step here for completing the square is to solve for the variable. We completed the square right here. Now we're going to solve after we completed. So to solve, I need to get this x by itself. I'm going to have to do this problem twice. I'm going to have to add 6 to both sides, but I'm going to have to add 6 to positive 4 and to negative 4 because this is two different numbers. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And when I do, I get that x equals, if I do the positive 4, positive 4 plus 6 is 10. And if I use the negative 4, if I do negative 4 plus 6, that equals 2. So there are my two solutions. If we were to graph this quadratic equation and have it equal to the negative 20, sorry, and have it equal to the 16, if we were to graph this and have it equal 16, then it would cross the x-axis at those two points. That's what that's telling me. So let's look at this next one. This right here is actually number three on your paper, but I'm going out of order on purpose because I'm trying to do the easier ones first and then move to something that's a little more difficult. So go to number three on your paper, and we're gonna do number three, then we'll come back to number two. So step number one, get all of your variables on one side and constants on the other. That's already done for us because variables are on the left, constants are on the right, we're good to go. Step two, make sure that the coefficient of x squared is one. Well, it is, so step two is taken care of. Step three, this is where I have to do the b over two part. So the first thing I have to do is determine what b is. Well, b for this problem is negative 6. So if I want to do, I'm going to move down here, b over 2 squared, then I have to do negative 6 over 2 squared. Well, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3, and negative 3 squared is 9. So this number I now have to add to both sides of my equation. So I go back here, and so I now have x squared minus 6x plus 9, because that's the part we came up with. This is now the we've completed the square. It equals negative 4. The rest of the steps we have to follow are just what we have to do if we want to solve. But I added 9 here. I have to add 9 here. So we'll simplify. x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 5, because that's what negative 4 plus 9 is. Now I'm going to factor this part right here. It's a perfect square. I know it is because when I completed the square, I made it a perfect square. So remember, I take the square root of the first term, x, use the first operation symbol, and then the square root of the last term, 3, and it has to be squared, equals 5. So my next step we're going to take the square root of both sides so I can get rid of the squared. This becomes x minus 3. And the square root of 5 is in a perfect square, so I'm just going to write this as plus or minus the square root of 5. 
Now, x is not by itself. I'm going to have to get x by itself, and to do that, I'm going to do that by adding 3 to both sides. Well, since I can't really do the square root of 5, what happens is this 3 that I added to both sides is going to go right here in front as a positive 3 plus or minus the square root of 5, and this becomes our solution. It's going, it's, it's, it's going to cross the x-axis, but it's going to cross the x-axis at some really weird numbers because this square root of 5 is what we call irrational, and so it's not a nice pretty whole number for us. But this still is going to cross the x-axis twice. It's just going to be some weird numbers, and since we don't really want to simplify the square root of 5 and come up with its decimal, we're going to stop right there. So that's all there is to that. So let's do a couple more. This now is your number 2. So go back to number two. Step one says get variables on one side, constants on the other. So I've got to get this minus one to the other side. So I'm going to add one to both sides. So now what you have is x squared plus x equals one. So now we have to do the b over two part. So this, oh no, we have to check step two. I apologize, step two. x squared has a coefficient of one, so I can skip step two. Now I can do my b over 2. Well, b right here, there's no number in front of the x. That means that my b equals 1. So when I do my b over 2 squared, interesting things are going to happen because b over 2 becomes 1 half. And when I do 1 half squared, that equals 1 fourth. So I'm going to have a fraction. And it's okay that I have a fraction, but I am going to have a fraction. I still have a perfect square. I'm still going to factor just like always. But there's a fraction involved now. So what I have is x squared plus x. I've got to add this part, so plus 1 fourth, which is a perfect square because I squared 1 half to get it. And then I have to do 1 plus 1 fourth over here. So this becomes x squared plus x plus 1 fourth. And if you take your calculator or whatever and you do 1 plus 1 fourth, it becomes 1 and 1 fourth but I don't want to deal with mix or mixed numbers, so I'm going to take 1 and 1 fourth, and I'm going to make it improper. That's 5 over 4, because if you have 1 and 1 fourth, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 makes 5, so it becomes 5 over 4. That's stuff we learned back in probably elementary school. I'm not sure, but you know how to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction. That's all I did. So here's what I have. So I've got to factor this using my perfect square trinomial. Square root of the first term is x. First operation symbol this time is a plus. The square root of 1 fourth, you can go up here to find out what it was because to get 1 fourth, I had to do 1 half squared. So the square root of that is 1 half. All of that is squared. And then this is 5 over 4. Well, I got to take the square root of both sides. And yes, this is a fraction. And yes, it is OK. This just becomes x plus 1 half. This side, if I look at it, this is really the same thing as the square root of 5 over the square root of 4. I can break it up into two different radicals. Well, the square root of 5, we know, doesn't have a perfect square. It's, I can't do anything with it. But the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. So this becomes plus or minus the square root of 5, because I can't simplify it, over 2 because that's what the square root of 4 is. Now to get x by itself, I've got to get rid of this plus 1 half. So I'm going to have to do minus 1 half on both sides. And I know that these fractions are really wigging you out. Don't have a heart attack. You're really not going to do anything but write them down. So this becomes x equals. And just like I did in this problem over here, when I added 3 to the plus or minus the square root of 5, I just put the 3 in front. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put this negative 1 half in front of this plus or minus so that I can keep it, I can keep this part second. So I'm going to have negative 1 half plus or minus the square root of 5, 5 over 2. You can stop right here and leave this as it is, or you can notice that these have the same denominator, so I can really put it all together, and I can put all of this in the numerator, so I can do negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5, and all of that is over 2 because both parts were over the same denominator. These mean the same thing. I don't care if you write it like this and stop, or if you go to this step and then you stop. They're the same thing. They'll both get you to the right answer. I'm cool with either one. 
So let's do one last one. This one right here, I've got to get variables on one side, constants on the other, but this one, if I take this x squared and I move it over here to this side, I'm going to have a negative x squared. And we can't factor things that have a negative a term. We have to pull out a greatest common factor and do stuff with it first. So I don't want my x squared to be negative. So I'm going to leave it over here on the right. What I'm going to do is move my 8x over here. But that's going to leave me with nothing on this side. So if I subtract 8x from both sides, that's what we're going to do first. That's going to give me 0 over here because I need something. I can't just have a blank. It's got to have a placeholder, so it's 0. And this side becomes x squared minus 8x plus 22. But I now need my constants on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 22 from both sides. So now I have negative 22 equals x squared minus 8x. This is just written backwards than what you're used to. If you want to turn it around so that this side is on the left and this part's on the right, go ahead. But I'm going to leave it as is because it doesn't really matter. I have now looked at this. I've got my variables on one side, my constants on the other, so let's check step two. x squared has a coefficient of one, so I can skip step two again. So if this is a and this is b, step three says I have to do the b over two thing. So b is negative eight. So if I want to do the b over 2 squared, I'm going to do negative 8 over 2 squared. Well, that's negative 4 squared, so this equals 16. Here's my number I have to add to complete my square. And remember, I have to add it to both sides, so I'm going to do negative 22 plus 16 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16 because that's my completed square. So let's simplify. Negative 22 plus 16 is negative 6. x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now I have to factor this part right here. Just like I've been doing, square root of x squared is x. My first operation symbol is a minus sign and the square root of 16 is 4 squared and that's negative 6. So now I will take the square root of this side and for this side well, negative 6, I can't, that's a negative number, so I know that's going to have to have, I'm going to fix this so it's positive. So the negative, remember, becomes an i, then the square root of 6. This side, when I do the x minus 4 squared, this just becomes x minus 4. Oh, and this was plus or minus, because that's what always happens when we take the square root of something, it becomes plus or minus. So then I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And just like I did with this one and with this one over here, when I added the number, I put it in front of the radical, the plus or minus sign, instead of after it. So I'm going to put 4 plus or minus i radical 6 equals x. And radical 6 or the square root of 6 cannot be simplified because its only factors are 2 and 3 or 1 and 6. Those are all, now you're going to have primes. You're not going to have any doubles of anything. So we can stop. That's going to be your answer to your completed square problem. So on your homework for tonight, I believe there are eight questions. You need to do all but the last two questions. I will show you exactly what I mean so that we're not confused. You have an assignment in your packet. And it looks like this right here. So it looks like this. There are eight total questions. You need to do questions one through six for homework. Questions seven and eight we will talk about tomorrow when, you, when I come to class as, as well as I will answer questions and go over anything that you still need. But you need to be prepared to discuss and have questions to ask so that we can talk about this some more tomorrow. But your homework tonight is just numbers one through six. That's what's due when you come to class on Tuesday. Y'all have a good rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow.